Hello everybody, my name is Ian Kirk Patty Cake. I'm an author at Robot, and today we are discussing an update on the RWA situation. Maybe you recall back in December where the meltdown of the RWA really came to public light. Really, it started kind of in the early early part of 2019 and, and grew more in the middle of 2019 and then just culminated in December of 2019. Um, if you would like to get caught up at that, I will link those at the very end of this video so you can catch up on all of the RWA business, but basically lots of claims of racism. The whole thing shut down. A bunch of people on the board resigned because of Twitter wars. And honestly, everyone needs to get off of Twitter. It's such a waste of time. I think the only thing that I have been doing on Twitter recently is posting a link to my videos because YouTube doesn't like to spread small content creators, and so I'm just trying to get some uh, some traffic in here. So uh, feel free if you like this kind of content, if you think that this is helpful, if you like this channel, feel free to share the video or like and subscribe to this video for more content. And with that said, we're going to get into what is up with the RWA. So in case you didn't know, for, for quick catch-up, RWA stands for Romance Writers of America. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. There are so many writers associations that are WA that are either association, America, affiliation. I don't. I always kind of struggle on remembering which one is which. But RWA retires the Rita Awards, announces replacement, the Vivian. In case you didn't know, the Rita Awards were the yearly awards that were award ceremony that were held by the RWA to give out awards to people in the romance industry and their different genres and their different story types and to kind of just celebrate another year of a job well done in the community. Um, but because of the recent whatever drama, they've decided to uh, retire the Ritas, but bring back, a, but bring into a new, but bring forward a new award ceremony called the Vivian. Um, this is silly and I'll let you know why I think so once we read this article a little bit. The new board of Romance Writers of America still trying to recover from the backlash of mass, mass resignations of officers and loss of members following their predecessors' attempts to censure Courtney Milan, and she should have been censured. She is a bully that uses Twitter to try to get her way. Hopes to signal their changing vision for the problem-ridden organization by remaking RWA's annual awards and naming them after the founder, Vivian Stevens, an African-American woman. And that is really why they did this. So they didn't get rid of the, the Rita Awards. They just changed the name of the Rita Awards so they could go, if somebody claims it's racist, they can go, no, our award system is named the Vivian after the black woman that started this organization. We can't be racist. That's all that I really see that, that, that this is. It's still the award ceremony. <laughs> they just changed it to the name of a black woman. Their statement introducing the Vivian, a new award for a new era, begins. The RWA Board of Directors is thrilled to announce the introduction of a brand new award, the Vivian, named after RWA founder Vivian Stevens, whose trailblazing efforts created a more inclusive publishing landscape and helped bring romance novels to the masses. In support of the Vivian and guided by the principles of diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, or, you know, die, the contest task force has been hard at work developing a contest that aligns with the board's vision of RWA 2.0, that is designed to fulfill the following mission. The Vivian recognizes excellence in romance writing and showcases author talent and creativity. We celebrate the power of romance genre and its central message of hope because happily ever afters are for everyone. So is that anybody who's been involved in the RWA and been to the Ritas? Can you tell me if that's really any different than what the Ritas were? Because this just seems like a rebranding of the Ritas to say black woman, to be able to say black woman at the same time. Or to kind of deflect. To pretend like they're doing something when they're not doing anything. which is shrimpy, to be honest with you. They're not standing up to the bullies. They're pretending to, to kowtow to the bullies while also not doing anything. Just have some courage, people. They also acknowledge the former award's namesake. We, should we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to Rita Clay Estrada, RWA's first president, for honoring us in the past 30 years as the award's namesake and for the service to RWA and romance authors everywhere. 
Precisely how winners of the Vivian will be chosen under the new awards judging scheme has yet to be revealed. So they probably redid the rubric specifically to involve die points. RWA director Avery Flynn responded to concerns, quote, I don't think I can go into any detail yet because it will be officially presented to the board and members at the May meeting. I'm sorry, I don't want to break task force a board confidentiality at this point. I know that's frustrating. Believe me, I'd love to spill everything now. The RWA's said, the RWA's says, I think there's a missing word there. The RWA highlights of the proposed format include one, a clear rubric to enhance and streamline scoring guidelines in addition to judge training that will allow for more standardized judging. Was that not there before? Two, a sophisticated matching process so that entrants can be sure their books go to judges versed in their subgenres. That wasn't there before. And three, a category devoted to recognizing unpublished authors. Their proposal will be shared with members at the May 30 to 31 board meeting. The board's goal for the rules and format to be finalized and voted on in the time for a fall launch. With the first year of the contest to recognize books published in both 2019 and 2020, the 2019 eligibility year is included to cover the gap left by the cancellation of this year's readers. RWA Executive Director Leslie Scantleberry and RWA President Alyssa Day spoke with Vivian Steffens to request the honor of naming this award after her. In their conversations, she was gracious, kind, and hopeful for the future of RWA. They asked if she would share her thoughts with our members, and we're pleased to relay them to, her, to you here. I once heard an astrophysicist explain how heavy elements of the periodic table forged into the center of stars later explode, showering the universe and everything in it with its spoils, stardust. Since we all live in the universe, it is well worth remembering that underneath the outer dressing of ethnicity, color, and gender, we are all the same, showered with the gift of stars. Funny that this whole thing happened because people were saying, bringing race into it. Vivian is saying, drop it, we're all the same, you guys. So there should be less diversity, like there should be less dye inclusion if we're all this, like, there should be fewer dye programs if we're all basically the same underneath that end. We, we compete as equals on an playing field where that stuff isn't recognized. We just recognize the storytelling. Today, as we move forward into a new world or... Oh, oh, oh. Why would you... A new world order? That is disturbing. Romance writers of America must be one group united by the purity of the craft that identifies the organization, guided by their star shine, moving quietly with confidence in the direction of their purpose, writing wonderful stories. Members must step up and deliver their best. Romance novels are read by people of every background throughout the world. They read these novels for entertainment, general information, lifestyle, ideas, encouragement, rules of behavior, fun, and good laugh. A good laugh, hope, and a reminder of how life could be if only. It is the duty of every romance writer to give every romance reader that experience. The writer must elevate themselves to be worthy of the craft and bring it Bring to it all the nuance and magic of good storytelling. The readers deserve and expect nothing less. BGSU's Brown Popular Culture Library profiled Stevens on Twitter today. Thread here, and there's a link. I will link this article in the description below so you can read all of this yourself. Some of the initial reactions on Twitter, quote, I think that meaning will be very diluted if the award still continues to exclude authors of color in large part. Courtney Milan, of course, because she's still, she's still being a race hustler. It's still about race. She only wants race to be pushed to the top, even though Vivian Stevens, a black woman, and the person who started the RWA is like, we need to, re re we need to be united under the craft and under the storytelling and under the hope that romance brings. Courtney Milan still has to push, well, no, this, it, it, yes, but no. No, this is actually just about people of color, not about storytelling, which tells you where Courtney's priorities are. Oh, look, she just, she needs to get a life. <laughs> she always has the most to say about stuff that she's not even involved in. I'm sorry. If you're going to make the promise, you have to keep it, she added. See, Shilov said, And when you can continue to carry the torch for the one who lit the trail, I cannot contain my excitement for the Vivian Write on Romance writers. Nicola Davidson, glad to hear the Ritas have been retired. Why? What, what specifically is so bad about the the Rita's that's going to be different from the Vivians. It's the same organization running both. It's just a name change. 
The Vivian sounds great, especially with the promise of clear, robust judging standards and matching readers with subgenres they know. Also, like they are including an unpubbed author category. I mean, it looks like they just revamped the Ritas, and instead of just calling it the Ritas, because the organization that I belong to in my state has a published and an unpublished category, and it's for all the genres. That it just does a yearly thing all at the end of the year or in October every year. And it goes over, you know, mystery unpublished, mystery published, romance published, romance unpublished. And you can submit to either or the whole time. So, I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with diversity or inclusion. I think it's just a good idea to help people build their resume. And I've commented about this before because I've been to um, different conferences. And it's like most conferences are either directed towards people who are just starting out. So all of the workshops are like basics and, and learning how to write. and learning the very basics of how to query, and then the, they jump straight to the people who are involved in the industry. But there's nowhere for, like, beginning or trying to get into the industry or, you know, if you're not a beginner but you're not hard in there yet, there's nowhere for you to go. <laughs> so that's a difficult place, in my opinion, to be, and that's another subject. But Elizabeth Stretcher, which you know that she's going to be Sketcher. Elizabeth Sketch, I think it's Sketcher. And you know that she's a winner because she's got pronouns in her name. Says, oh, the name had nothing to do with it. It was the associated baggage that was the problem. The Vivian will be entirely new and reworked with an eye of fixing the problems inherent in the Ritas. Which was just not enough. Discrimination against white authors is uh, what I've gathered. Anyway, I think the changing of the name Rita is one to try to make it look like they're doing more than they actually are. Because they don't want to fight the Twitter mobs. Twitter is a cesspool, people. Okay. You need to get off Twitter. It's not real life. And so much news that I keep seeing is coming from Twitter, which is the most tiniest representation of the population. And it is the craziest version of the population. Because every moderate gets shut down. It doesn't talk because they're afraid to talk because of the, the rabid people that will run ruin their life. And um, everybody else just gets banned. I, re I saw a thing this morning. It is... Uh, Wednesday morning, I saw a thing this morning that said journalists who reported on the Biden uh, stuff with Russia are now having their check marks removed. I didn't like I would say I thought that I thought the check marks were called verification because it makes sure that you're the person that you say you are not because it's verifying that your opinions are correct. And it's some badge of honor that you fit with the regime. But that's what all of this is. Don't do market research on Twitter. It is not legitimate for the market i've even thought about not posting videos on twitter anymore because why it's not even 20 percent. it's barely what 20 per, i think it's barely 20 percent of the 20 percent of the population is from 20 i think it was barely that 20 percent of the user base on twitter is american anyway and of that it's like two percent of that 20 percent make most make like 80 percent of the posts or something like that I linked to, to the study in another video. You can find the information super easy. But a lot of people are using Twitter and social media for their news and their market research. Tim Pool is, is, does videos on, on stuff that's happening on Twitter all the time. But Twitter isn't real life. And most of America is not paying attention to real life. It's such a waste of time to copulate to these people. Because then you've also got the problem. I think copulate might not be the right word. But I digress. So capitulate. <laughs> that's the word that I want. Because any time that you that you secede ground to these people, you have now put yourselves underneath their thumb and in their power. Uh, I don't know if you saw recently, but Michael Moore, who is a leftist, who is a staunch leftist for a while now, has just been called a right wing hero because he said that there are people in the global warming movement who are taking advantage of it just to make money. And now the leftists are mad because all of this time he's been capitulating to them. And because he said something out of line, now they have turned on him. Because when you build your group pleasing a certain group of people, instead of, you know, actually building people that care about you and your opinions, even if they disagree with you, then the second you divert from those, you're going to lose your support. All you can do when you build your brand based on pleasing a certain group of people and a certain group of ideas is continue to share their ideas. Because the second you deviate, you destroy your career, you destroy your business, you destroy your organization because they are only with you for that lockstep.
And that is the dangerous ground that the RWA is walking in right now is because they are capitulating to these people with very strict opinions of what you're allowed to think and what you're allowed to say and who is allowed to be a romance writer. It's the same with like Joe Biden recently saying, well, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Okay, so being black doesn't have anything to do with biology anymore. It's having a specific set of ideas. This happened to the gays before too, where they said, if you don't think this way, then you're not gay. And the romance industry is clearly, well, people in the romance industry are also clearly doing this, where they're saying, well, if you don't think this way, then you're not a romance author and they want to oust you out of the romance industry. Booksellers and publishers don't care about your opinions. They want to sell books. However, too many publishers are paying too much attention to the outrage mobs on Twitter. And since their MO is to make money, if they think that you are going to lose money or, or mess up their brand because they're going to be associated with helping this bad person by publishing their book as opposed to selling stories, then they're going to kick you out of the industry. And it's a very messed up situation. If you don't have integrity, you don't have anything. And if you don't stand for anything, you stand for nothing. Wasn't it? There's some Thomas Jefferson quote, and of course I'm messing it up now. That's like, if you have enemies, then it, that shows that you stood up for something in your life. It doesn't matter that some people don't like you. Somebody is always going to dislike you for something that you say, for something that you believe. And if you fashion your personality and your lifestyle in order to please everyone around you, then you don't have any real friends. I'm sorry, you don't. Because the second that you're not who they want you to be, they're gone. So instead of pretending to be somebody you're not, and pretending to have opinions that you don't, just to seek acceptance, be yourself. Find people who like you for you. Find people who like you despite your ideas that they might not agree with. Find somebody who cares about you that you don't have to worry about sharing who you are with or else they're going to leave. That's going to be the strong relationship. That's going to build the bond. And maybe it's a lonely road. That's kind of the road that I've been on for a while. Mm. But at least I don't have the pressures about lying. But at least I don't have the pressures of lying about who I am and pushing stuff I don't believe and fear and putting my value in what other people see in me. Put the value in yourself. Put the value in your work. And don't let others define you. Don't let others define you by their opinion. You define you by your work your morals, and who you are. You, other people only have power if you give it to them. Anyway, that was kind of a side tangent. RWA, you're making a mistake by capitulating to these people. You need to stand strong in what you're doing. And you can tell specifically by Courtney Milan's responses that she's just a race hustler and she's just going to complain and complain and complain. She was complaining. If you listen to the... Uh, when, I, when I read the initial complaint document towards her, um, it talked about how she was complaining about RWA until she got into the position of power that she was in. And then once she was no longer in the position of power, she went back to Twitter to start complaining again. It kind of implied that she only stopped once she got into a position of power and they kind of put her in a position of power just to go, can you please just stop trash talking us on the internet? And so it's uh, kind of uh, smarmy and kind of threatening to say, well, I'm going to trash talk you until you do what I want you to do. Stop. There's no pleasing these people. And there's no pleasing Courtney. She's always got something to say. And she's going to say it in a smarmy way because she's a lawyer. So uh, if this is the path you choose to go, RWA, good luck. But the further you get from writing and focus on writing and storytelling, and the more you focus on die, the more you're going to kill yourself. But let me know what you think. These are just my thoughts, uh, my rants. Tell me yours in the comments down below. If you like this sort of content, please remember to like share, subscribe for more, and send me stories that you would like me to cover or comment over because I got a lot of opinions, and I'm sure you do too. Until next time, talk to you later. Don't die.